Hi, this is a presentation on My Voice Call Recording. The My Voice Call Recorder can record ISDN lines, ISDN 30, ISDN 2, SIP trunks, PSDN lines. It can record analog extensions, digital extensions, IP extensions, and SIP extensions. And we can mix and match those type of connectivity on a single or multiple recorders. The system is currently licensed for between 0 and 750 licenses per server with 3,000 monitored users. The My Voice Call Recorder has a management studio interface for call retrieval and playback. It looks and feels like Outlook and has unlimited user licenses. This basically means that the user can have their own call recorder and playback. Why can we do this? Well, the user can't delete the calls, can't manipulate the calls, and therefore it is still FCA, FSA compliant. They can add information to the call and add tags to the call, which allow supervisors or team leaders to look at the additional information given to them that is not normally contained within the telephony screen. The management studio can show cradle to grave visualization. That is from the start of the call to the end of the call, subject to, it, to its configuration. The idea behind this is that you will be able to see every single person involved in the call from the start to the end of the call. And that would include the transitions, i.e how long the call has been put on hold, how long it was ringing for, and indeed how long the person was on the call for. We have automatic call organization folders which can be created which will allow you to automatically organize the call, i.e. from a major supplier or an individual. And those folders can be set up such that they would automatically show those individuals within that call folder list. You can add multiple annotations, notes along the timeline of the call at any time in its historic mode or its live mode. We can tag calls with additional information that you'll see later on in the presentation. We can share calls inside the business unit using a call shared to me and calls that I've shared and indeed calls shared outside the business by exporting those calls in MP3, WAV, GSM, etc. The client desktop is another feature that is available to all users. It is a desktop client that will pop during a call that will allow the individual to add additional information to the call in a live manner. It also has the ability to manually stop start a call, view their last call, and add information about the call. These buttons you can have up to six and with a drop down list that, uh, you're enable, you're, that would enable you to click on and uh, mark that call with that additional information. Other features like call slicing and merging of calls, the ability to take a call, a slice of a call from Monday, a slice from Tuesday, a slice from Wednesday, and merge them together into a single call recording is also available. Redacting, call scrubbing, blackout. This is a feature that allows you to highlight part of a call or parts of a call and redact part of that call. That means that you can't actually hear the conversation. So it's great for training when you want, when you want an individual to listen to the call and uh, play that call back without them hearing the rest of the, that part of the scrub call starts. This is terrible. All right. Redacting, call scrubbing, or blackout is a feature where you can highlight parts or parts of a call and blackout that particular part of the call. This is used in, in a training environment when you are playing back the entire call to an individual and you may not want them to listen to a particular part of the call. There are built-in APIs for PCI compliance. Manual stop start, client based stop start recording and IE based stop start recording as well. These APIs are free of charge and are built into the system with the purchase of a MyVerse call recorder. There are API tools available on the website to download. There are also built in APIs for CRM integration for the likes of Microsoft Outlook, Dynamics, Microsoft SharePoint, Salesforce and many more. Again, this is the same API tool that can be downloaded at any time. There is also integration to My Contact Center and My Contact Center Office where you can pull up the individual calls from those programs. 
a license is normally required. Other features like call record on demand and save call on demand are also available where you can save or record a call at the push of one of the buttons shown on the desktop. We also have standalone players, standalone PVD player, a portable voice document. So now let's have a look at the My Management Studio itself. The Management Studio looks and feels like Outlook. It was designed this way for ease of use. Over on the left-hand side, we can see the highlighted orange area which says historical calls. So this would be available for all users who wish to play back historic calls. The other buttons below, live calls, reports, evaluations, are normally used by supervisors or team leaders. So we are highlighted on the, on the historical calls, which is shown again in the top left-hand corner here. And below are folders which we can actually use. Now, first off, we can see calls I shared and calls shared to me. All the calls are in a format called PVDs, Portable Voice Documents. I, we can share these calls in the same manner that you do with voice messages and emails. It's available to all users, so therefore each individual user can have a call recorder. This is the My Voice Call Recorder Management Studio. This is the interface which allows you to search and playback calls. Over on the left hand side we can see the historical calls and this can be used by any individual who has got a management studio. Over on the left hand side we can see folders in the same way we can see folders within, say, an Outlook client. Below, I've got calls I shared and calls shared to me. This is the mechanism that allows me to share calls within the business unit and have calls shared to me as well. And these calls can be enhanced with tags or notes and indeed shared through to other managers within the business. The report drill down folder allows us to look at reports that we have produced within the reporting section of the tool, which is available with the QM licensing. The My Calls folder, allows me to view my calls and my calls only. It doesn't allow me to view, for instance, my colleagues' calls. And the reason we can do this is because my profile does not allow me to see any other individuals. Therefore, if I need to pull up the back end of a call which I'm involved in and listen to the last few digits of a mobile phone, I can without asking a supervisor or a team leader to uh, pull up that call for me. I can't delete the call or manipulate the call, but I can add notes and tags to the call to add additional information. All calls I can view is a folder tree. This is a folder that is set up that allows me to look at, let's say, Team 1, Team 2, Team 3, Team 4, logistics, whoever is involved in those particular departments, I will be able to see them as a team leader or a management, uh, management user. Underneath, I've got call folders. Now, call folders allow you to set up individual folders based on the individual or the client. It may be a case that you've got multiple numbers coming in from a particular client and they go straight into a folder. Now this folder sits in the background and organizes your calls into these particular folders. Call search folders allow me to build either basic or advanced call search folders. And these all appear in alphanumerical order and we're gonna see that a little bit later as we progress on. The work queue folders are for supervisors when using scheduled evaluations, which we'll again we'll see a little bit later. For demo purposes, I've highlighted the calls shared to me. This folder appears at the top, and we can see there are six calls in this folder. The call folder columns show the call detail, from start date, outside number, duration, through to the DDI, outside name and direction, through to ACD agent, ACD groups, area codes. And also you can see here a couple of other areas that wouldn't normally be given to you by the telephone system. So this is entered by the agent, either historically or live during a call. So in this example, we can see that this is a new car inquiry and the call has come in and it was about a particular car. And we can see that that is the, particular li that is the list of cars that this automotive reseller sells. Clicking on one of these highlighted buttons will mark the call at the appropriate time with that information, and that information could be searched on. Another folder column, i.e. Wicked Tickets, allows us to mark the call with information that that particular company sells or provides. In this case, if I want to mark it with attractions, I've now marked that call, and when I come to search for the call, I can look for the word attraction. Moving across, this information can be taken out or added with the fill chooser or remove column. Highlighting one of the folder columns 
and right clicking the mouse will allow you to remove fields or choose fields. Clicking on the field chooser will allow you to add more information or take information away. I've just highlighted the reference ID. This is a unique number that is attached to the call. This allows for APIs to connect to this unique number, used alongside the API tools. Okay, let's find a call. By pressing the Find button on the left-hand side, a white box appears at the top. It's a simple, quick find box, which allows us to add any information that you see on the screen. In this case, I'm going to search for the extension 1212, and I'm going to click the Search folder. This will search the folder I'm in, called Shared to Me, and it has returned three results. It will put them in date and time order. I can also move these fields around to give me the more visual space. If, however, this is just too simple a search, I can use the Advanced Find button. Now, what this will do is it will give me a full SQL search. If I look in the Advanced Search folders, I can click on the account code description, which is the field, and drop down and use any one of the predetermined or fields that have added, been added by you, the customer. Let's build a share. If I click on Extension, I've got some conditions which I can use. In this case, I want to exactly match a value, that value being extension 1212, and I populate that in the call search field. I'm going to go now go back to the call, and I'm going to look for, let's say, some information that I've added to the call. In this case, the, let's say the new car inquiry. And I'm going to look for the Jaguar. There it is. If I add that information to the call field, I've now got 1212 and a marker called Jaguar. But let's add another piece of information, let's say a start date window. If I say that this call is within the last, and I'm going to be very, very wide, within the last three years, I can say now that that was a call to 1212 about the Jaguar within the last three years, execute the search, and I should get one return. It shows me one return, and this is the particular call. So this is how you find a call either from a basic search or an advanced find search. Now, we don't want to do this all the time, so over on the left-hand side, going back to the call search folders, we can build call search folders that allow me to click on a button once. Now, for example, if I click on Jules Calls 1212, that will pull up all 884 of Jules calls and put them in date and time order. How do we create these? Well, rather than create a new search folder, if I edit Jules and just right click the mouse key and edit the folder, you'll see that I give it a name. The same drop down list that you see me use before, the advanced SQL search appears, and I can build a search criteria. I can have that just as a simple extension search, 1212, or build an advanced search, which will then appear on the left-hand side as a one-button click. And again, you can have them in alphanumeric order and have hundreds of these which become a one-button click. Once you've actually found a call, I'll just reset the screen, but once you've actually found a call, that call appears in this blue rectangular box. And in here, this is our player. We use standard play buttons. These are these triangular buttons, which you'll see that as I move the mouse across, they highlight with additional information. So this is play. Play fast, stop, restart, rewind, forward, skip held section, and a volume control as well. The call is displayed along the timeline, the entire call along the single timeline, and we can see that as I move the mouse across, it tells me that the duration of that call is three minutes, 29 seconds. I can see the call came into my tell. I can see it went to an IVR. I can see that the customer dialed the digits, 1212, and indeed, Jill answered the call. I can see lots of information across the timeline, to make, but to make sense of that, below we have the transitions of the call. So the call comes into 2507 and was connected for nine seconds, put on hold for a split second, and then was ringing at Jill's phone, or Jill's phone for three seconds, and then Jill was on the phone for, on the call for 49 seconds. Jill then put the call on hold for three seconds and transferred the call to another person, that person being Cara. However, multiple extensions were being rung, as we can see here, and we can indeed see who was being rung. There's Greg, Vern, on different extension numbers as well. 
So moving the mouse across the information that you see on the screen gives you additional information. We can see down the bottom we've got annotations or notes. If I just lift this up slightly, you can see that there's multiple notes on the screen. And they actually appear in time order on the screen as little notes. If I click on this note and I'm allowed to, now allowed to see this note, if, if I wasn't allowed, it would say subject unknown. But if I'm allowed to see it, it gives me the subject header. If I double click on that, it will just pop with the notes that was actually put on during a demo that was previously carried out earlier. So we have carried out a search and we have found the call we're looking for. We uh, see, have seen the entire timeline of the call and we wish to share this with someone else within the business unit. To do this, we can left click and drag the mouse button through the entire call and the call will start playing back. Okay, I'm just going to stop that. Just turn the volume down so that you can actually hear my uh, dulcet tones. <laughs> so I've highlighted the entire call and now you see some areas over on the right hand side which have just highlighted. The little head and shoulders here is a share Next to it is an export, then we've got a lock key and a rubber. Clicking the head and shoulders will allow me to share this call, this entire call, with anyone who has a management studio interface. You can click on the individual or individuals and share with them. This would appear in the share folder below. With the sharing options, put expiry dates on the call. I can apply the select document regions to the recipient, that's everything. I can allow the internal user to share the documents on if I wish, allow the recipient to create and change and delete their own annotations based on my permissions, allow the recipient to view any notes that are put on the system, and allow the recipient to view any coaching history as well. So some of these boxes may not be ticked. Pressing OK will share the call in the same manner that you see an email. This calls shared to me would change to bold and would show one. So it's very similar to that of receiving an e when you receive an email. Pressing the rubber button clears the screen back to normal. I can highlight just a snippet and send a snippet as well. And what you would see is a dark red line that says audio unavailable. The highlighted part would say audio available and the rest of the call would be unavailable. If I press at this point, if I press the lock key, I've now locked that first section. That now allows me to highlight a second snippet. I lock that one, a third snippet. So I can, I, I can highlight multiple snippets of a call. I can go to the same process, go to the share segments, and share that call with another individual. However, whether I highlight the entire call, one snippet or multiple snippets, I can export these segments out. This is used when you wish to send an email to someone outside the business, someone who doesn't have Management Studio. So what I can do is I can take a copy of the original call. I'm not affecting that in any way. I am just taking a copy, so it's still digitally verified and can be used in the court of law. I've given this name Test Export 044, and the format I wish to send it in is, in this instance, MP3. I can choose its bit rate. I'm going to leave this at 40 kilobits. And if I wish to email after the conversion, that would put an attachment into my Outlook folder, my Outlook email. When I begin the conversion, two green lines would go across the screen and it would put the copy of that call on my user's London Demo documents folder, ready to be sent to the customer. So we can see all the highlights of the call, the length of the call, all the transitions of the call, how many people have been involved in the call, how long they were on hold for, how long the call took to transfer an answer. I can see any notes on the system plus any tags on the system as well. Another free of charge feature with the system is the desktop client. This is all browser based. The desktop client can appear during a call. Some of the features are that you can manually stop and start a call. You can view your last call. You have drop down buttons up to six, which will match 
the folder columns that we see earlier. So during a call, if I want to mark a call at that moment in time, click in this new car inquiry button would give me a drop down list with the same car list that you saw earlier. And of course, this will work for any company, any vertical or horizontal, because this is configured by the customer. So it can be based on product, service, whatever they wish. These are also macros which will allow us to let a supervisor, if we have a QM license, we'll let a supervisor know that the, there's an upset caller or if you need to put a note on the system or open up a URL or go to a, a, a particular database, these buttons can also achieve that uh, functionality. So just going back slightly, we can see calls that are shared, calls that I shared, calls shared to me. We can actually see potentially just my calls. A team leader can see all their calls, plus their team's calls, plus multiple team's calls. We can set up call folders which actually schedule and let's say align customer information. We can see call search folders, whether they are basic or advanced call searches, and we can have, literally have hundreds of those. When we click on a folder, it appears at the top, and we can see the calls in date and time order with all their associated call detail. When searching, we can search on a basic call search or an advanced call search. Once we've carried out that search, those calls would appear, time and date order again, and those calls will appear in the play box, which is below, the blue rectangular box. And we have standard control uh, play buttons, play, play fast, etc. We can see the entire timeline of the call and every single person is involved in that call from the cradle to the grave or from the start to the end. We can see any notes or any tags that have been put onto the system by the client desktop and we can see uh, all those that information in uh, date and time order. That is the My Voice Recorder historic call recording management interface. Quality management, QM licenses. These licenses are added to the My Voice Call Recorder. They reside on the same recorder and adds to the My Voice Call Recording functionality. Four main areas of the QM licensing are live monitoring, instant message coaching, evaluations, owner's reports. And also it's used in quality management networking. It's in the networking of the call recorders in multiple sites. The QM concurrent licensing allows for multiple supervisors to use the quality management tool at the same time. Those supervisors can live call monitor and schedule an automatic call monitor. They can add live notes whilst listening to a call and add live tags adding more information to that live call that can be reviewed later during an historic playback. The desktop client adds a coaching button which allows for a two-way instant messaging conversation between the supervisor and the agent and the agent and the supervisor. Enable them to get information from a supervisor based on an inquiry that may have been asked of them. This is an audible, no peer pressure, IM conversation which will get permanently tagged against the timeline of the call. It should also be noted that we record Whisper Coach as well. The mobile recall feature allows the individual to use a tablet. For instance, it will allow someone to monitor calls, evaluate calls, playback calls, whilst using that tablet in a wireless environment. It can be used between floors, uh, with a Bluetooth headset. It allows you to have mobility, an ideal tool to use when conducting training for multiple users. There are other features which are enterprise class features. Instant reconstruction with multi-call player. Highlighting more than one call will give you instead of one player but multiple players with their own balance and volume control, allowing you to build an instant or reconstruct an instant as it progresses. Automatic location integration is a feature that allows you to click onto a button and a map will be produced that ties in with either postcode, address, longitude or latitude. This can be used in emergency services or breakdown recovery services where they have an, a license that allows them to trig exactly where that call has been made from, so used in emergency services. Historic and live agent evaluations can be carried out using the quality manager license. There are no agent evaluation licenses, but any individual, any supervisor using QM will need an active license. There are also reports built into the system based around QM, quality assurance, quality evaluations. The system has a reporting package. Reporting packages are based around quality assurance and quality evaluation report. You are able to actively score and rate agents, run employee evaluation, employee comparison, quality efficiency reports. We can even reduce customer interaction reports. These are reports based on the button clicks of the client that we saw earlier. 
Resource usage reports allow you to monitor the system to see if additional licenses are required. Okay, let's look at the live interface. You'll see that there is now a live calls, reports, evaluations buttons on the left hand side. A supervisor is therefore able to click on the live calls and see the live screen. When clicking on live calls, we can see any calls that are active and being recorded at that moment in time. I can see calls by user, calls by category. I can see calls by sales team one, sales team two. I can see information if, if for instance, a user has pushed an upset caller. I can see that information live as it's occurring. I can see the information about the call across the folder columns, but also I can see the timeline moving across from right to left as it grows in time. I can see who's involved in the call. We can see that we've got an outside trunk going into an internal extension on our system, and that call is actually being recorded. I can listen live to that call as a supervisor, and there's a few things I can do with this. I can listen live, and I would listen to this moment in time as the call comes in. I can drag the mouse back and play fast. I can review the call as well. I can add live notes and tags to the conversation whilst in live mode that can be reviewed at a later date. Any notes or annotations that I put on the system, I will be able to see in the historical call detail as well. Evaluations. If I have a list of evaluations, I can evaluate a live call. I can also evaluate historical calls as well. So this gives us a lot of interaction that a supervisor can use, for instance, when training. It may be the case that I have set up some alarms that say, when I see my best customer going through to my newest agent, inform me, pop it up on my screen, and allow me to click on that button, and I would then come straight into this screen, and I can listen to live to that call to see how that call is progressing. If I need to send them a message, I would click into the coaching conversation and send an instant message through to the agent, and they indeed can reply to my conversation and that would get saved as a coaching management track against that moment in time. It's an audible conversation path that gets saved against the timeline of the call. This is ideal when you do not want to break away from the outside party and you just need some information uh, without disconnecting from the outside line. The call can be played fast from wherever the little orange bar appears. This bar can be moved, and I can play the call from that moment in time, even though this is a live call. Another feature allows you to email this recording, once it is finished, to any other party. A supervisor, administrator, anyone who has a quality management license can also run reports. They can have their own reports, or use public reports, or look at all reports. And these reports can be shared by supervisors as well. Let's click onto a report that's been created. This is a Manchester demo report. And so we're looking at the Manchester demo report. We can see all the extensions down the left hand side and their inbound and outbound and total calls across the top. We can see that extension 2319 has a total of six calls, four inbound, two outbound. If I want to see the two outbound calls, these underlined blue numbers are hyperlinks back to the calls. You can see that the actual two calls appeared in the report drill down and are now appeared in the display. I can now review these calls, add notes to these calls, add tags to these calls, and indeed run an evaluation if I wish. You can run reports based on extension, shift patterns, trunks, inbound, outbound, quality assessment, staff assessment, the rating and scoring behind the calls as well, how many evaluations have been carried out, how many call, live calls have been monitored. Running an owner's report allows you to see what is being carried out on the call recorder. We can see who's 
live monitoring calls? Who's reviewing those calls? Which type of calls are being evaluated? Who's coaching calls? What type of reports being run? What type of calls are being exported? The total number of calls. So we can see just at a glance what is actually happening on our system. Again, you will have hyperlinks back to those recordings to review at any time. Evaluations are also included as part of the QM licensing. You can have an unlimited number of evaluations with unlimited number of questions within those evaluations. You can rate and score based on 1 to 10, true, false, yes, no, agree, disagree. These are built individually by the customer. The evaluation types appear underneath an evaluation folder and can be clicked on so I can manually click on a uh, customer engagement evaluation for instance and that would appear within the playback screen. There could be multiple number of questions as I said before and I can rate these accordingly. The play and play fast, the stop and the rewind buttons are also included in this screen so that we don't have to go back backwards and forwards between multiple screens. We can leave notes and we can finish this later if I haven't got time to do it now. Evaluations can be manually set up or scheduled via a work queue folder and this will allow me to sample let's say Team 1's calls on Friday and I only want to, put, but to evaluate 1% of their calls. That would give me results in my evaluations folder and I can come back to my desk and see one call or two calls on a Friday afternoon I can click on and evaluate. I can have a manual evaluation that that's can appear on a desktop, an agent's desktop, that uh, may have five questions, first call resolution through to last call resolution. The agent can answer their questions and I can run a supervisor evaluation comparing the agent and, the and my answers as well. You can run a comparison between staff members I can run a manual evaluation and a supervisor evaluation against the agent evaluation for comparison. QM screen recording. This is a feature that is licensed on an individual PC basis. Each PC can have up to three screens. You can capture the PC screen activity whilst that person is on the phone. The PC screen will sync with the call recording and a timeline of the screen recording will also appear as a green bar across the call recording field. Historic screen recording allows you not only to listen to the call but to observe the screen that the agent was working on at that time. So I can review the call and their screen processes as well. However, quality management supervisors can not only listen to the call live, add notes and tags, but can watch what is currently happening on the agent screen and can use the tools built into the product to give them direction as required.